Hello, this is Palico Padge, and welcome back to another episode of Padge Plays Yolo Edition with the game Orion Trail by Shell Games. We're on mission five. Can you believe that? I honestly didn't think we'd get this far. I'm not going to jibber jabber too much about this. You've heard me gush about the fact we've, we've got oh so far on basically a blind let's play. But what I will say is we are heading towards a black hole. That to me doesn't say it's going to be a good ending. You know, here we are on mission one, starting off in the lovely transient space that is, well, transient space. And then as we slowly merge in and get onto more difficult missions, things get darker and, well, more sort of dead. You know, there's no there's no sparkles around this black hole here. There, there appears to be sparkles from inside the black hole, but as far as around it, it's all dead space. I don't know how I feel about actually progressing. Maybe it'd be better for me to fail at one of the first missions and enjoy what would be a, a, a safe system, one would presume. I don't know. We're waxing lyrical here. Let's crack on, shall we? We're on mission five to the Gates of McFadden, which is obviously a play on Gates McFadden, the Doctor from Star Trek The Next Generation. My favourite Star Trek, in all fairness. I'm, I'm not a big Trekkie, so I'm not, I don't get all the jokes, but big fan of The Next Generation. It's what I grew up with. So it's much like who's your favourite Doctor Who. It's whoever you grew up with. Apart from the fact that David Tennant for me was the best Doctor. But I'm, let's let's not get into an argument about this. That's just my personal preference. But yes, Gates McFadden, Doctor in Star Trek The Next Generation. Named for the famed human explorer who first discovered this sector. This tangled web of space lanes has proven to be quite difficult to, 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 to traverse. Mm. Let's crack on. So, oh... Well, there you go. Um, can you hear that? Someone's bought a really loud motorbike around where I live. Um, because today is the nicest day we've had so far. It is, what am I recording this on? April the 18th. And we are having a mini heat wave after having a really crap winter and start of spring where it snowed on my birthday in March, which is ridiculous. Today, it's 24 degrees at the moment. Blue skies. And I'm sat inside a, a room with all the doors closed, all the aircon turned off. All the, all the shutters closed, and yet I'm still getting noises, which I don't want. I, I'm, I'm jibber-jabbing again. Let's let's enjoy the sun, shall we? Let's record this as quick as we can, get out there, play a little bit of, I don't know, what do you do? Happy sack, I guess you play in the summer. I don't know, surf, skate, roller skate? I'm just naming things off California games now. So we are <laughs> choosing our captain. Uh, well, the reason I went ooh is because we've got Captain Forever here. Now, um, I'm not sure if you are aware, but there is a game called the Captain Forever Remix. It's a game which I will be bringing to the channel at some point. It's in my list of channels, uh, games to bring to the channel. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So that, that's a crossover. We then have Janaya Leeway, which is obviously Captain Janeway from... Oh, you got me now. It's not Voyager. Is it Voyager or is it the other one? I don't know. I don't know. I'm losing my nerd status here quite quickly, aren't I? <laughs> then we have Van Braun. I don't know. It's a bear. Looks cool. Uh, has the best stats? I don't know because Captain Forever's got three in social, two in science. Or we can have three in science, two in bravado. I think the social diplomacy, if you want to beat about the bush. Or do we go for the attack tactics and diplomacy? It's better spread out, isn't it? You know what? We're going to be a bear. Van Brown. Van Braun. Van Brown. See, B-R-A-U-N is pronounced Braun in this country because it's it's the razor model. I don't know if that means anything to anyone else anywhere. Is it Brown? I have no idea. I have no idea. So now we have to choose our first officer, which is Emily Mind, Loretta Fife, or Jack O'Brien. All right. So we're building upon attack tactics and diplomacy. We probably need to carry on doing that. With that being said, there is no one here who is ideal. Really. The best one is probably Jack O'Brien because he's got two in diplomacy. We're going to grab one from science, but that's fine. We'll just have to deal with that. So let's just click on him. A good humoured communications officer. A lot of these are repeated. So I don't think it's much need to say the biography every time. Well, just the one we pick. So with a knack of bringing up levity to tense situations, Lieutenant O'Brien's leadership can sometimes outshine the captains he serves under. Not today, though. We have two new names as well when it comes to recent commenters, which is 
good good it means you know more people are joining in in the in the well the, let's face it the, the the things that they say and i reply to and that's pretty much where the conversation goes in my comment section but let's not beat about the bush on that uh, but yes we have a new person we have i'm gonna have to get this right because it, he's a cool kid he's got a funny spelling name we've got p s y k zero mm, the zero is important m u n k e e psycho monkey you sir are my officer my first officer we then have more people again no, no one here which i can pick on i don't think uh, as far as stats are concerned well i suppose carmina marin is probably going to be our best bet she has two in tactics and one in diplomacy the rest are sort of teetering around the edges so no carmina marin and who's carmina marin going to be well let's face it slightly chubby faced you know as a cadet, Lieutenant Mar Marin graduated at the top of her class with advanced training and engagement tactics. Some say she can even beat the Admiral himself at hollow chess. S sounds important. Sounds like an important person. And uh, this person is used to being uh, gendered as a woman in my playthrough. So Lebowski stepping up to the... Stepping up to the bat once again. Yeah, so I was just checking to make sure I got that right. It didn't look right for a second then. I just had to double check. So there we go, we have Lebowski, and then we have our last person. Again, we're, we're just trying to ham on to the fact we've got attack, tactics, and diplomacy here. I'm thinking it's probably going to be... Lieutenant Tyler, maybe? We put diplomacy and science up. But then again, maybe it's better to hedge our bets towards attack, because that's only on two. So maybe Yo-Yo is the best person. Five, three, and two. That's, yeah, let's go Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo's good. And again, we have a new name to bring to the game. And that is Mike Fluff. You know where you stand with Mike Fluff. That's his name. We'll say no more. And here is the route for hopefully what will be the next two episodes. You, you can never tell whether this is going to go well or not. But uh, I like to think that that is a decent enough spread of, of, of stats for us to be pretty much covered for anything that might hit us but by the by uh we are going to go with four of those and oh there we go and four of those the others haven't really bothered me as of yet although crew did get pretty low because we know what to expect at certain points throughout the game now uh, i feel we can put that to our advantage but with stuff like food and fuel if you do lose it in a random event it tends to be a large amount so it's probably best to try and cover that and uh let us launch so so, 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 so. We've got a planet there. And we've got a planet there. A signal and an anomaly there. And then the goal. So, we need to get about halfway. It's a shame you can't zoom out. It'd be nice to see the entire map. So, I figure we'll go to the squeezy bit. So, we'll aim for around here, just past this station, and see uh, what our timings are like at that point. So, without further ado, do we want to go to... An asteroid belt where we're not sure what we're going to get. Uh, an asteroid belt where there might be food. Or a class K star where we can get that hull up. I think we'll go for food. It's probably best to try and stack up on our more refined materials as best we can. So that's going to be food and fuel. That's stuff you use up every time you move. Alien allergens. A group of adorable furry aliens want to trade you food and fuel for your broken computer parts. What a deal. Indeed. You invite them on board. Unfortunately, your crew's allergies kick in as soon as they step out of the airlock. Oh dear. So, what are we going to do? We could probably do the diplomacy. Keep the talks going. Uh, we, get, we could lose crew though. Would I prefer to lose crew or hull? Well, with diplomacy being five, I think it's probably best if we just hedge our bets as best we can at the start. So let's go with diplomacy. You're not going to stop just for some allergies. You tell the aliens those sounds are how humans show respect. The green stuff leaking out of their noses, also respect. Smooth. You try to block out the sound of your crew's misery. I mean, look at that. Look at the way the stats are. I think it goes to say for itself that you bastard. That is not a good start. I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That is not a good start. The allergies are worse than you thought. Several crew members sneeze themselves to death. Even worse, the food you traded for contaminates contaminates your own stores with alien dander and you have to jettison it all. You really wanted to eat it too. So we've lost a little bit of food, nothing too much to worry about. The crew is a bit worse. 
that was quite a chunk. Quite a chunk. So, do we go to the red nebula or the green nebula? Well, we need crew now, so we're going to the green nebula, I guess. Oh, dear. Shooting blanks. Oh, as a practical joke, someone seems to have filled your main cannon with empty phaser pods. You reassure your worried crew that it is the main cannon in name only. You have plenty of others. That's great. So already the crew are working against me. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Human resources. A finely dressed man hails you and explains that you have trespassed through his territory and must pay the toll. You reach for your wallet. Your first officer explains that he is a notorious slave trader. You put your wallet down. So we can trick the slaver with neutral paced people. We can incite a rebellion. Or we can differ your, off yourself as payment. Well, that doesn't seem very sensible. We're going to have to incite a rebellion, I guess. You rally the slaves with an impassioned speech about the strength hidden within and how together they can overcome anything. You can do it! Is this just a straight up fail? Ah, oh, excellent, splendid, superb. The slaves revolt. After overthrowing their master, many of the former slaves swear to become space vigilantes and uphold the values you extolled. The rest join you because they want a living wage. Can't blame him for that. So that's offset that a little. We've only technically lost two people now, which is great. Uh, are we close enough to be able to know what's coming off these yet? So we've got food there. Or food there. They both... No, both only one threat. So that's nothing too much to worry about. That's food. What about afterwards? Food? I don't know. And we need to go to either of those two in order to be able to hit the uh, station. So, with that being said, it doesn't really matter, does it? Do you want a distress beacon? We'll go for the distress be beacon. I don't think we've done one of those yet. So, the red nebula it is. Oh dear. Alien obelisk. Before you, floating in the darkness of space, is an ancient carved obelisk covered in various alien languages. The carved characters shift and change in front of your eyes. It seems to be made of a very strange material. So do you want to study the writing or study the obelisk's construction? Right, well, with us taking a hit to our attack, it might be worth add, adding up on science now. Diplomacy is pretty strong at five. It's not the best, but as we get further along this run, we get more chances to fail anyway. So the five isn't going to be the domineering stat for that long at the very least so it's probably best to hedge our bets as much as we can i am enjoying using the word hedging the bets today I, I feel but there we go the obelisk seems to be made of stone but not the material rearranges itself through different electric impulses coming from the crystalline core the experiment to make this discovery destroyed the carved letters but you know science indeed science indeed all right sign Synapsen Brain Beast. You come upon a space colony that's a titanic Synapsen Brain Beast has made into its nest. The colonists within are mind slaves under the beast's complete control. Besides that, the colony appears bustling and bountiful. Tippity top. Right, so what do we want to do? Diplomacy again, I guess. Negotiate the colonists' freedom. You command your communications officer to open a channel and you hail the behemoth. Alright, this is probably gonna end badly i mean why would uh yeah why would a behemoth just f hand over the mind controlled slaves I, I i didn't see any good no oh. oh oh is that that no that's bad that's bad you request for colonists is denied in a way a starfighter from the colony flies straight at your ship your science officer suspects that it slipped out of the beast's psychic range you recover the pilot after she smashes through your hull so we've got an extra person we've lost three holes so that's not good and more importantly we lost two tactics that's proper rubbish that is proper rubbish so uh onwards and literally quite far upwards now i think yeah we're not first for fuel at the time being crisis the admiral's book warning incoming transmission from admiral armstrong you rush to your quarters to answer the Admiral's hail and his face appears on screen. I can't find my century's old rare first edition of Moby Dick. Can you look into this for me? So, uh-oh, he's noticed it's gone. Or scour the galaxy for it. Well, we've not known what is up for risk on the uh-oh, no, he's noticed it's gone. 
And the fact we could lose crew. Although crew's not doing too bad. I could lose hull that way. That would be very bad. Uh, you know what? We'll do it. With mountain debts and space poker, you borrowed the book some time ago. Thinking the animal would never notice. Time to talk your way out of this and fast. Go! Go! If this is successful. Wow. Uh, that's what it's called look, I guess. But Moby Dick's about a ruthless leader who ruins everything to get what he wants. You're not like that, sir. The Admiral hasn't actually ever read the book, but now isn't sure he wants to. He thanks you. You get out of comm range. Warp speed. Boom. Nice. Doesn't make up for the fact we've lost two of the tactics, but hey-ho. Beggars can't be choosers. Wild Space Kingdom. Galaxy Force has received a distress call from a crew filming a nature documentary on the third planet of the Akriti system. They're trapped and you're the closest ship. Uh, we've done this one. Uh, we'll do it again, though. So, um, I don't know who would be best for this. It's science and attack, isn't it? If I remember rightly. Uh, I mean... Mike Fluff, he's got diplomacy, attack, and science. I think Mike Fluff is the way to go. This is probably going to end terribly. The away team approaches the source of the distress call and find an empty shuttle completely overwhelmed with warp weasels. They're eating the padding of the chairs, chewing exposed wiring, and, and building nests everywhere. Where is the film crew? So, it doesn't really matter what we do here. We can call HQ or we can uh, shake the weasels, as it were. Well, we'll shake the weasels, I guess. Those warp weasels are destroying human property, and who knows what they've done to that poor f film crew. Make them pay! Oh, here we go. This is going to be terrible. That's a fail, isn't it? Oh! Ah, that's all right. I, can, I, I dig that. Mike Fluff goes on in blasting. Warp weasel fur and cute little body parts go flying everywhere. The threat is neutralised, but Rob is red five is so utterly horrified... They simply can't go on. Rob is Red 5. Well, with a name like that, deserves it. The film crew, it turns out, is filming a short distance away. As the team approaches, the director motions to be quiet. They're filming a giant Akiri wildebeest, rooting for food. It's stunning until Mike Fluff sneezes. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. What should we do? Kill the wildebeest? Study the wildebeest? Or apologise to the film crew? You know what? We're all about manners here, so we're going to apologise. Your team has just messed up... The filming of the Wild Space Kingdom's Akiri Wildebeest episode. Host Parlin Merkins is described by his handler as extremely cross. You order Mike Fluff to apologise on behalf of Galaxy Force. Come on, Mike, make it sincere, or else we all pay for it. Uh, it'll do. It'll do. Parlin Merkins accepts your apology, but seconds later, he's attacked by the Wildebeest. Michael Everson steps in as host at the last minute, but becomes the permanent new face of Wild Space Kingdom. Right. So, technically not dead. He's actually gone on for, for better things. Is he still going to puff up in a, a big load of dust and a skeleton? Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, you found the film crew and dealt with a rare Akiri wildebeest. The crew asks your protection as they finish filming the episode. There are several cool locations that could film next. Which one is your way team most prepared to handle? We did the planes last time, didn't we? So let's do the cave this time. The film crew is feeling bold. Now that they have the protection of a Galaxy Force squad, they suggest filming in a cave, and it's a ways north. You see no reason why not. Your way team is armed and dangerous. The away team and the film crew tentatively explore the cave. Parlon Merkins, the host, hopes they'll get actual footage of Akiri bats. No sooner does he say that than a whole flock of the spindle-legged seven-eyed brutes swoop down. Oh dear. Well, defer to the film crew. I, I suppose this is their barbecue and it does taste good, so it's up to them what we do. These wild space kingdom folks clearly know more about the Akiri fauna than you do. You order Mike Fluff to do whatever Parlor Merkin says the team should do. I concur. Again, it's, it's just sensible, really. We are 50-50 now, and that is a critical fail. Bugger. Damn it, cries Mark Parlon Merkins. I'm a documentarian, not a commander. He and the rest of the crew stand there helplessly as the bats attack. Oh. 
Could have been worse. The away team collects itself from that harrowing experience, only to come upon a rival film crew also filming a nature documentary. It's the Splat Brothers, those loud edutainment guys in their khaki shorts. Uh, and indeed, oh. So, we run them off. Do we cooperate with them? You know what? We're going to run them off. We're going to run them off. You had orders to protect the Wild Space Kingdom crew, darn it. And that's what you order Mike Fluff to do. You'll protect, you'll protect the film crew, and now you're going to protect their ratings. Indeed. Indeed. It's a rivalry. No one said anything about a friendly rivalry. It's just a rivalry. I'm pretty sure you can come to blows over stuff like that. Two of your crew grew up watching the Splat Brothers and rush up to them, s singing their very catchy theme song and asking to join their crew instead. Jerks. Yep, I agree. Your A team and the Wild Space Kingdom crew see a flock of stately Akiri blutes or blorts? Blues? <laughs> These are large ostrich like birds with two heads, which are only rumoured to actually exist. Oh, it's a rare one. Study the birds, stalk the birds, walk among the birds. Uh, all we can do here is study, so let's do that. These birds should be studied. Nobody knew they actually existed. Cautioning Mike Fluff to act with care, you order that data be collected. Alright, so it's against us now. I just don't want a critical fail speed up. No, okay, alright. Great. The away team starts whining. They don't want to study. They're not even in school anymore. Why sh should they have to do homework? The birds are alerted to their presence and they charge. Alright. The crew of Wild Space Kingdom has only one more species to film on Akiri 3 before they come aboard the Indestructible 2. You're now standing before the amazing and dangerous grove of giant carnivorous Venus flytrap plants. Catchy name. So do we want to take a sample, ask the film crew's advice, or send a decoy? Um, you know what? For science. Let's do it. You order Mike Fluff to take a clipping from one of these plants so that they can be studied, cultivated, and weaponized by Galaxy 4. Sounds good. Sounds good. Not liking our odds, in all fairness. Well, there you go. There you go. What do I know, eh? What do I know? Mike Fluff manages to slice off a good-sized chunk of the giant purple plant. While you aren't able to raise the weapon or and weaponize more plants from this sample, it's soon discovered that the plant tastes remarkably like rhubarb. Nice. Food. Now that the mission is over, there's all this footage from your adventures on Akiri 3. Some of it could be pretty embarrassing to Galaxy Force. What do you order Mike Fluff to do with it? So, do we commandeer it or destroy it? Uh, well, we don't want them wasting their time. We'll commandeer it, edit it, give it back to him. You never know what you might need, when you might need embarrassing footage to blackmail someone with. Plus, you may recut it into a series of entertaining vines. That's where I was. That's where I was. Your away team, or what's left of them anyway, finally but safely return to the indestructible two of the crew of the Wild Space Kingdom. The Grateful Network offers your choice of reward. Food, fuel, or seeing them safe is reward enough? Food. Food. You ask for food. You get warp weasel, world beast, glaf, blorts, plant steaks, every creature you met on the Kiwi 3. Ironic. You even receive some Splat Brothers branded Nutri bars. Uh, wink wink, nudge nudge, say no more. So that was alright, I guess. That we've had better runs, better away missions. And, uh, well, let's face it, Mike is not doing well. Mike's taking a beating. So that's uh, probably the last time we're going to have to use Mike this time around. But thank you for, for helping out. I'll try not to finish you off as, as best I can. Backstar the Instructor. Hungry and desperate, you hail a passing alien ship. The hollow conflict is on. Gana ha ha, food? Only prime pupils get a tasty treat in my class. If you wish to survive, listen to my lecture carefully, Captain. For it will all be on the test. So we can pull the fire alarm, take notes and ace the test. Or present a doctor's note. You know what? Doctor's note always worked for me as a kid. You raise your hand and wait patiently for Backstar to call on you. Grr, this had better be important. What is it? You upload your doctor's note to the instructor, which explains that you need an hourly snack due to low blood sugar. I mean, it looks good on paper. That'll do. That'll do. Backstar scans the note thoughtfully. Very well, Captain. I will supply you with something to snack upon. <laughs> Minutes later, a jewel steel tube filled with cool ranch nutri paste appears in your quarters. Not your favourite, but hey. I'll live with that. I'll live with that. 
food and fuel's all right, actually. So let's go to the Space Alamo, see what's going on there. The Space Alamo. You are arrived at the Space Alamo, a popular trading hub for the Takoshans, as well as a variety of other local species. The Chitty people seem to run a tight ship around here, so it should be pretty safe to stop for a spell. So we can rest and heal up some HP. It might be worth doing that. Do you want to rest here and recover some health? You'll have to consume some, some supplies to do so. Use 30 food. We can do one. Time to kick back. You eat the food and begin your long session of R&R. &R. Crack open the Nutri Paste. Boom! By the time your crew is finished, you've blown through at least a month's worth of rations. I mean, for, you all feel awesome now, but you're a little astonished at how much you ate. Sometimes it's all about the comfort eating. So, uh, I guess we'll go and explore and see what's going on. The Space Alamo is renowned for its orbitally, orbitally, blah, 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 orbitally grown produce, but there also seems to be a bar, B-Bar, along with a few other traders in the vicinity as well. well. Let's go to the bar first. You take a look around, it's packed with lively characters from all around the sector. Who would you like to talk to? That lady with power armor or that guy with a table full of gadgets? Let's do the power armor lady. You approach the woman in power armor who introduces herself as a bounty hunter. After shooting the space breeze, she lets you know that for a price, she'll be happy to improve your ship's offensive or defensive capabilities. Uh, well, with us being A-OK -okay on tactics, it's probably best to improve our defenses and knock it up a bit more. The bounty hunter offers to upgrade your shields and sensors as long as you're willing to trade. She says she's looking for fuel or hull. Well, we don't have hull, so you can have a hundred fuel. All right, all right, we'll do it. After finalizing the details of the trade, the two of you shake hands and the bounty hunter immediately gets to work. That better be worth it. Right, so let's trade for resources. How much hull? It's only one token. That's not too bad. So if we take off three fuel, I have two hull and one food. I think I'm happy with that. That's about as rounded as we're going to get, I think. And uh, let's get back to the docking port. And let's skedaddle out of here. I, that was as, as smooth as it could have been. I think we're going to finish... Look at how far we got, which is still quite far. Uh, we are going to finish around around here. Around here. One of these three. Uh, and then we will head to the planet at the start of the next episode. So, we could really do with focusing on food and fuel still. So, we've got food there, or we don't know there. So, on to the food. The Underbaker rises. A criminal feared for his confectionery genius as much as his evil, the Underbaker plans to use his quantum oven to unbake all pies, making him the galaxy's sole supplier. He demands you, your fuel for his plan. If you refuse, he threatens to bake you. Ugh. Right, so, um, get him monologuing. Find a way to counter unbaking or blast him. Uh, it's probably going to have to be him monologuing. Acting confused, you imply you don't understand the Underbaker's plan. Everyone knows super criminals hate it when you don't understand their plans. Perhaps if you get him talking, you could make a break for it. Uh, the odds are in our favour. It's going slow. And then it speeds up to fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Underbaker determines that you need a practical demonstration and uses his quantum oven to bake your crew croissants. Then he bakes your crew into croissants. He then unbakes some of them back to normal. Just because he can. So we've lost six crew and we've gained three food. Oh dear. It's not looking good for away missions. We're probably going to have to focus on crew from here on in. Uh, so that being said, we've got fuel there. Or we're unsure of whatever is there. It is two threat on that one though. So we'll go for the single threat, I think. The Wrath of Kang. You awaken from your daily cryo nap to find that someone has disabled your ship. Suddenly you are hailed by disgraced ex-Galaxy Force Commander General Evelyn Kang. Greetings, Captain. Going somewhere? So, we're going to have to diplomacy the shit out of this. Challenge Kang to debate. 
Kang accepts with a wicked grin. Let's make it a fuel wager. I'll argue the merits of Galaxy Force as an intergalactic federation for positive change. You must explain why Galaxy Force is awful. Think of it as a chance to vent your frustrations. Ah, interesting. Why do I hate my job? In a thousand words or less. Right. Of course, you give a tame to ride about the red tape involved with ship budgets, but end up giving the old force the benefit of the doubt in the end. Kang gloats. That was hardly conclusive, Captain. You should read my blog once in a while for some ideas. Oh dear. 80 fuel. That is not good at all. So, fuel or crew now, really. Uh, as it stands, they're both double threats, so it doesn't really matter. Crisis analog disruption. Alarm begins to blare. You've entered space controlled by the Analog Collective. Their rudimentary technology slipped by your senses. Nearly a dozen hodgepodge cubes float into view. You don't think you've been detected yet. <gasps> right, so it's uh, tactics. It's just whether we power down the sneak by or full power to engines. Either way, we're, we're pretty screwed here because we've got no fuel and our hull is low. So power down the sneak by, I guess. The Analog Collective has a hatred for modern technology. If you can sneak by the cubes, they won't forcibly downgrade you and your crew. They power down everything but life support and begin coasting. Here we go. Just just let the motion of space take me away from it all. To failure. To failure. You coast through the field of floating analog cubes. To your horror, one of the cubes, completely oblivious to you, floats into your path. Without your engines, the only thing you can do is fly right through it. So you do. Oh! And our screens all cracked. This is probably as good a place as any to leave this episode. I don't think the next episode is going to be very long. A man appears to be on fire down below and he doesn't seem too fussed by it. He is dressed like he's from ABBA. But there we go. I'm not one to judge. And he's off back into the flaming lift. Which, you, of course, you would do. You know, there is a fire in a tower block. The lift in itself is on fire. And you do have the stairs. But obviously the lift is the quicker way down. What do you choose? The, the lift inferno or the stairs? It's the lift every time. So I, I dig that. I dig that. But I digress. Thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.